Hey guys, it's Callie. Welcome to Youth Night Live. Thanks for tuning in this week. We have a great night planned for you guys. Two things to remember before we get started. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you're signed in so you guys can comment throughout the night. Uh, tonight we have games, worship, a great message, and prizes for you, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, it's Cariana. Um, I really miss you guys and I hope all of you are doing well, especially all you seniors out there. I miss you guys a lot. Um, during all of this, I've been sending Josh a bunch of Christian TikToks that have been popping up on my For You page. And he texted me this week asking me to put together my top five. So here are my top five favorite Christian TikToks that I've been sending Josh. Gosh dang it, man! Why? Bro, just got into reading the book of Matthew and they really just kill off my favorite character. Never mind, he's back. Pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this food. Please bless this food in my body and Jesus. No, pray. Please help me be patient as well. And bless this food in my body in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. It's game time and today we are here at the house of one of the Annex game greats. That's right, I'm talking about Peyton Adams. This guy is an eating game champ. He's tackled it all. Milk, meat mountains, eggnog, and today he's taking on a classic, Chubby Bunnies. The game's really simple, you can play along with us at home. How many Jumbo Marshmallows can Peyton fit in his mouth while still saying the words Chubby Bunny? Put your guesses in the comments now and we'll find out. Howdy, I'm here to play some Chubby Bunny. Oh. Chubby Bunny. Chubby Bunny. Chubby Bunny. Chubby Bunny. Chubby Bunny. Chubby Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you can do one more. Do one more. <laughs> You're on a roll. You're on a roll. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> Okay, go, <laughs> we can let it up. <laughs> Much better. The king has spoken or eaten. Eight was the number of marshmallows that Peyton could fit in his mouth while still saying chubby bunny. So if you guess eight or close to it, we're gonna draw one name from the comment section to win a gift card. Thanks for tuning in to game time. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's Callie again. Let's have a little fun and give some stuff away. Um, tonight I have some $10 gift card and some youth group swag we'll be giving away to the person who leaves the best joke in the comments right now. I could use a laugh, so I'm sure you guys could too. And while you're at it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.
welcome to Senior Spotlight. This is a brand new piece of Youth Night Live where we get to celebrate and honor our amazing seniors, the class of 2020. To all my seniors out there, uh, we love you guys. We're proud of you. Uh, we know this is not the way that you wanted to end your senior year, but we want to take some time each Sunday night just to recognize and honor some of our awesome seniors. So tonight, we have three awesome seniors. We want to talk about the highlights of their high school career, what their plans are, after graduation and also some wisdom for all of you guys watching. So starting off we have Carianna Estes. Some of her highlights are being on the robotics team for four years, going to football games with friends, being a TA in the counseling center junior senior year, going on CTE field trips all over Lane County with friends, and going to plays and musicals to support her friends. Kiriana says that she's confirmed going to Oregon Institute of Technology and she'll be starting there in the fall. She plans on majoring in embedded systems engineering with a minor in software technology. Her goal after college is to one day work for NASA and she also wants to own her own bakery. Kiriana's senior wisdom is this. You're going to struggle, and at times, things are going to seem impossible, but it's okay to ask for help. Make sure you take a step back every once in a while and just live in the moment. That's some great wisdom right there. All right, next we have Logan Kerr. Logan said some of the highlights of his high school career was winter camp being a big highlight. He said it's a great experience to deepen his faith and grow stronger in relationships with my small group and other kids from the annex. Another highlight was participating in the Mr. North pageant. Even though they didn't get to have the pageant, it was still super fun. Logan says that his future plans are going to Oregon State. Hashtag Scobeaves. I'm just saying it because it's because it's right here. Uh, he's going to pursue a degree in kinesiology to hopefully start a career somewhere in the medical field. His senior wisdom is this. As a freshman, I wish I knew to cherish all the fun and amazing experiences with family and friends as well as little things because high school flies by. It's very true. All right. Our next senior is Sam Morehouse. Sam's highlights are winning Ultimate Frisbee state championship freshman year, going to Hume Lake, winning first place in the Marist Talent Show sophomore year with his brother Ben, winning second place in the same talent show junior year, winning first place again senior year singing Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. That's a lot of talent. Uh, and going to, to Hot August Nights with Dad in his 59 Cadillac. Sam's future plans, uh, currently he's working at Birch's Landscape and he'll go to college in the fall to be a high school or middle school teacher at either NCU or Western Oregon. And Sam's senior wisdom is this, high school is not like high school musical. It's true. <laughs> Well, those are our senior spotlights for tonight. Carianna, Logan, Sam, we love you guys. We are proud of you. And I can't wait to highlight some of our other seniors in the weeks to come. Hello, my name is Intern Jacob. Something you might not know is that we have a daily Bible reading plan on the Bible app that you can use to follow along with our current series. First thing you need to do is download the Bible app. It's free and easy to use and it's a great tool for helping you read or listen to the Bible. Second, you search the plan Happy Easter, which is the current series we are in. Third, you just start the plan. You can either do it by yourself or you could do it with a group of friends. This is a great way for you to continue to read into God's word and stay connected to what we're talking about here at Youth Night Live. So go ahead and give it a try. Hi everyone, I'm Madison Fuller. I'm so glad that you're here tonight and I just wanted to take a moment to pray for everyone in our youth program right now. So please bow your heads and pray for them. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone here right now in this live stream. 
that they can be at peace with where they're at right now and just continue to do what they're doing and have a life full of joy right now, even though it's really difficult. So in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here tonight. I was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I'd hear your call But Father, you worked your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne Father, you love me still And in love before you laid the world's foundations You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. You left your home to seek out the lost. You knew the great and terrible cause. Jesus, your face was set. I worked my fingers down to the bone. Nothing I did could ever. weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Hey everyone, my name is Emily. Is there anyone in here who actually likes peeps? Like, likes peeps? You know those little so-called marshmallow chicks and bunnies that show up every Easter? This might just be me, but those things do not bring me a lot of Easter happiness. I seriously gag at the sight of them, and feeling the texture of them is even worse. 
Despite how I feel about them, for some reason, grocery stores load up with them around Easter time. It's like a bunch of peeped themed haunted houses. And what's crazy is the week after Easter, you see people rush to the store because they're half off. Like seriously, what do you even do with that many peeps? Every year around this time, I feel like I'm in a personal war against peeps, especially because everyone in my house loves them. Meanwhile, peeps are taking over my pantry, causing me to turn against my family. Why? Because I'm the only one who sees how disgusting these creatures are. Okay, maybe I'm being a little dramatic. Peeps have never caused me to turn against my family. Peeps have never made me feel all alone and on my own. But there are some things in life that have made me feel like I'm on my own. I bet you could think of a few yourself. When I was a kid, my parents moved our family across the country because of a job change. I started in a new school, moved into a new house, and moved away from the only friends I had, all within a couple of weeks. Thankfully, I was only 10 when this happened, and I adapted pretty quickly to the change but there was a definite feeling of loneliness there for a while. And that wasn't the only time I felt that. Whether I was on my own making certain decisions, standing by certain beliefs, or dealing with doubts and fears and feeling like I was the only one who had them, I have definitely had seasons of feeling alone. At this point in your life, I'm sure you have too. Maybe it was because your family moved, your friend group changed, or you lost a friend, a breakup, certain decisions that no one else seemed to understand, a question, feeling, or doubt that you had and you felt like nobody understood you, especially your parents. I think we all know what it feels like to be on our own. And this is different than experiencing independence or freedom, isn't it? This on your own feeling is more like loneliness, fear, uncertainty, and anxiety all wrapped up into one. And when we feel like we're on our own, we start to believe things that seem to be true in the moment, but generally aren't. Maybe we think that nobody understands us and probably never will, or that we'll never get through what we're facing, or that we don't have enough strength to make it on our own, or we become more afraid and isolation only intensifies it. Here's what's tough about loneliness. Statistically speaking, almost half of Americans feel alone. Now I have to admit, sometimes being alone is cool. I'm an introvert, so I can spend long periods of time on my own and really enjoy it. But there's a difference between being alone and feeling alone, isn't there? There's a difference between alone and lonely. And when it comes to loneliness, our generation is flooded with it. And that sense of loneliness has contributed to a rise in things like anxiety, self-harm, depression, even suicide in our culture. Why? Because loneliness tends to make us feel hopeless. Think about it. When we feel alone, we tend to feel overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by our situations, our circumstances, our feelings, our pain, or our confusion. And here's what's crazy about that. Loneliness feels so bad because I don't think God wired us that way. I'm saying we were created and wired for close relationships. You and I were never meant to carry the weight of what we feel, experience, or worry about on our own. And so it makes sense that when we don't have that, when we don't have what we were created for, things don't feel right to us. But what should we do about it? Sure, showing up for friends is important. Joining a small group is important. But there are times when being alone and even feeling alone is just an unavoidable part of life. So how do we handle it? Well, believe it or not, what happened the very first Easter and in the days following can be a game changer for us when it comes to this seemingly overwhelming problem. The very first Easter, Jesus' closest friends felt overwhelmed in a similar way. For years, they had been traveling together, doing life together, hanging out every day with Jesus. Suddenly, they were completely on their own. At least, that's what they thought for a couple days between Jesus' death and resurrection. While we don't spend a lot of time at Easter thinking about the time between Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, I can guarantee you that his closest friends, disciples, and followers never forgot how difficult those days felt. You see, Jesus' closest friends and followers had walked away from jobs, family members, finances, and safety just to follow him. And then he died. The future they imagined for their leader, their country, and themselves disappeared. Just like that, everything changed. So what did they do? Some stuck together, but many of them ran for their lives or hid from the people who killed Jesus. They had no clue what was going to happen next. 
We know how the story ends, but at the time, they didn't. So imagine their surprise and relief at seeing Jesus alive again. That is, until Jesus left again. Yes, you heard me right, Jesus died, came back to life, and then left again. But this time, their response was completely different. One of the ways we know what happened with Jesus is a document written down by a doctor named Luke who investigated the whole thing. In fact, there's a second document where Luke recorded exactly what happened with the Jesus followers after Jesus died and came back to life. He recorded their acts, and so we call that document the Book of Acts, even though it's more like a letter than a book. According to Luke, when Jesus left a second time, his followers didn't seem to think that they'd be left alone again. In fact, it wasn't until after Jesus left a second time that Christianity really took off and began to change human history forever. We'll get to the rest of what Luke said, but before we do, I want to look at another document written by one of Jesus' good friends, John. John remembers that before Jesus was crucified, he told his disciples that he was going away, but they didn't get it at the time. This is what he said in the final meal with his disciples before he was arrested. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Jesus actually told his disciples that it would be better for them if he left. But why? Well, Jesus continues, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Jesus said that in order for the advocate to come, he had to go. The term advocate usually refers to someone who helps, comforts, and defends others. And the same is true here. This advocate Jesus is referring to is what we call the Holy Spirit. It's basically the spirit of Jesus among us, even though he's not physically present. He is the one who helps us, comforts us, and gives us wisdom and power beyond ourselves. The Holy Spirit came to earth after Jesus left the earth. Jesus promised that if he left, it would be better for us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit would be there. And once the Holy Spirit arrived, the power and spirit of Jesus could be everywhere, not just in Jesus. And so right before Jesus ascends into heaven and leaves for the second time, he reminds his disciples of what he said during the last meal they had together before he was killed. Yes, his physical body was leaving, but his spirit would remain behind. Check it out. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Of all the things Jesus could have reminded his disciples of, he chose to remind them that the Holy Spirit was on the way. The Holy Spirit would come and give them power to tell people all over the world about him. In other words, it was a reminder that even though he was leaving, they wouldn't be alone. And guess what? It's exactly what happened. In the days and years to come, Jesus' followers would receive the power of the Holy Spirit to tell people all over the world about him. And today, roughly one third of Earth's population says they believe that message. The Christian movement started by Jesus and carried on by his first disciples outlasted things like the powerful Roman Empire, intense persecution from governments and other religions, and then just thousands of years of change. The men and women who Jesus left twice started the greatest movement in human history. Even when their leader seemingly left, even with their overwhelming lack of resources, even with their perceived powerlessness in the face of the authorities of the day, the Holy Spirit gave them power even though they seemed powerless. And even though Jesus left, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with them. That meant that even though Jesus wasn't physically there, they would never be alone. Here's the best part about all of this. Jesus' promise was not just for his first disciples. When Jesus promised an advocate who would give us power and be with us, that was true for everyone who would ever believe in him. That means that you and I have access to that very same spirit. See, Easter is so much bigger than a celebration of something that happened 2,000 years ago. Yes, Jesus' resurrection changed everything, and the resurrection is the center of everything we believe as Christians. But it's also a reminder of His power and presence that are still available to us today. Easter can change everything about how we live our lives right now because of this simple truth. Easter means you're never alone. 
Jesus' first followers knew what it was like to feel like they were on their own. After he died, it seemed like all their hopes were crushed. They may have even felt like they made a huge mistake by following him. And while I can imagine they loved seeing him come back to life, they were probably surprised when he didn't stay with them. They probably wondered how Jesus not being physically with them could be a good thing. But soon they learned that it was. He left something behind. Actually, he left someone behind, an advocate, his spirit, which reminded them that they'd never be alone. What if you and I could live with the same assurance and confidence that they did after receiving the Holy Spirit? What if no matter how lonely, how overwhelmed or misunderstood we felt, we could trust that we're never alone? Let me ask it more directly. What if this is real? What if the literal, actual God who created everything and died and rose again is literally always with you? What if the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus is very real, very here, and wants to help you with whatever you're facing today? See, simply trusting that the Holy Spirit is with us can change everything for us. In fact, even though we can't see him and may not always feel like he's there, knowing he is with us in the moments we feel on our own means that we can be confident about a couple of things. First, you can talk to him anytime, any place, for any reason. When you feel alone, what if you chose to talk to God about what you're going through? In the New Testament, we learn that the Holy Spirit helps us talk to God when we don't know what to say. What if the next time you felt like you were on your own, you chose to talk to God about what you're facing or feeling? What would happen if you chose to believe that he hears you and his spirit is at work in ways that you can't see? Second, you're stronger than you think you are. The odds were stacked against Jesus' first followers. Jesus wasn't there. They were underqualified. The Romans were incredibly powerful. Yet, the movement they carried forward has forever changed the world. That's because they knew that they were stronger than they seemed. They knew that even though it looked like they were on their own, they had God's power flowing in and through their lives. The same is true for you and I. When we face challenges that seem too overwhelming for us, we can be confident that the Holy Spirit's power in us cannot be overcome. We can also be confident that God's power in other believers will be there to support us too. You might feel like what you're facing is too powerful for you, and that may be true, but it is not too powerful for the one that is in you and other Jesus followers around you. Remember, Easter means you're never alone. The power of Easter is that Jesus enabled us to be confident that we'll never be alone again. Why? Because we trust in his spirit that lives inside of us. In a day and age where so many of us are lonely, this might be the happiest news we've heard in a while. As you head out today, I want you to think about this question. In what area of my life do I feel alone? Then imagine Jesus, the same Jesus who loves you and died for you, looking you in the eyes and saying, you're not on your own here. We're in this together. Maybe the best news you'll hear this week is you don't have to imagine this. The Holy Spirit makes it a reality and that's why Easter is so very happy.